if you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Oh, that's... I am embarrassed to be sitting here in your presence, having to even dignify you. On a Monday, I am waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? Live TV. Exactly. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song, and I know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. Hey celebrities, it's your boy Vitaly and welcome back to Italy Space. On this channel we're desperately trying to bring back the 2007, so you better join if you knew. But before we get started, I gotta address something. So the other day I officially lost my battle with keeping up with my hair. It's 95 degree weather here in LA, leave me alone. <laughs> now you are gonna have to keep up with this for the next month and a half. But anyways, let me know what do we think about it. Let the roast begin, baby. <laughs> But my vlogging channel's VIP legends knew about it first. Join us! In this video, as a tradition, we're gonna go ahead and talk about other people's failures. Let's be honest, sometimes we all make some stupid decisions we later come to regret. It's simply human nature, and celebrities are no exception. Today, we're gonna deep dive into some of the craziest moments when celebrities, at the height of their success, made decisions that would inevitably destroy their reputations. Or maybe some of them happened by pure accident. I guess we'll find out. Buckle up, legend, you're definitely not ready for this one. Only on Retali Space. But before we get started, it came to my notice that 60% of you legends who watch my videos are not subscribed. You know what I'm trying to say. And the first problematic creature on the list is Natalia Kills. Hey lovers, it's Natalia Kills, and you are watching Vitali Space. The year 2015. Zayn Malik decided to leave One Direction. The first ever Fifty Shades of Grey movie was released, and Natalia Kills managed to cancel herself on X Factor New Zealand, as well as her husband. Don't even get me started on this one. <laughs> At that point, Natalia Kills was not super well known. But after her cringe incident, she instantly became known around the world as a bully. And for those of you who are not familiar with her, here's a quick breakdown of Natalia's career pre-X Factor. Natalia Kills is a British singer and songwriter. Her debut album, Perfectionist, was released in 2011, and her second album, Trouble, in September of 2013. You might not be familiar with her name, but there is a bigger chance that you've heard this song of hers. It's my favorite from her discography, to be honest. This track is effing fire, not gonna lie. But outside of this, I kind of slept on her music. In 2014, she got married to her boyfriend, Willie Moon, who was also an artist on the same label. The following year, in 2015, the two were hired as judges on the second season of The X Factor New Zealand. Little did they know, little did they know. Now, let's get to the most interesting part that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Natalia made headlines when she and her husband were fired from the show in the middle of the season. And the reason? Well, she delivered some totally brutal critiques to one of the contestants, Joe Irvine. Come on and cry. Basically, after Joe's performance, Natalia accused him of copying her husband. And the reason for that is because the contestant was dressed in a suit. Wait, what? And since it's apparently her husband's brand, Natalia felt so triggered. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just gonna state the obvious, we have a doppelganger in our midst. As an artist who respects creative integrity and intellectual property. I am disgusted at how much you have copied my husband. From the hair to the suit, do you not have any value or respect for originality? You're a laughing stock. It's cleopatra it's you disgusting. Cleopatra? I personally, I personally found it absolutely artistically atrocious. I am embarrassed to be sitting here in your presence, having to even dignify you with an answer of my opinion. 
This is so freaking absurd. Absurd is the only word I can think of. She's acting as if Willie invented those fucking suits. Make it make sense. So uncalled for. But as if that was not enough, the Mr. Husband also went in and made the entire situation even worse. To me it just feels a little bit cheap and absurd. I mean... You're like, it's like Norman Bates dressing up in his mother's clothing. It's just a little bit creepy and I feel like you're gonna stitch someone's skin to your face and then kill everybody in the audience. But, okay. do you? It's absolutely disgusting, you have no identity. I can't stand it, I'm ashamed to be here. I think I look really good and... I think you I look good care. because you're dressed as my husband. Actually! You're dressed better than her husband. Thank you, Mel. And after the attack that was so uncalled for, the audience flipped on the two, and so did the general public. Almost immediately people, and even some celebrities like Lord and Ed Sheeran, started defending Joe. Oh. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. There was even a petition that was created, with more than 70,000 signatures, to have the two fired from the show. And let's just say the petition has worked out. According to the CEO of MediaWorks, while the judges on X Factor are expected to provide critiques of performances, we will not tolerate such destructive tirades from any of the judges. We no longer have confidence that Kills and Moon are the right people to perform the role of the X Factor judges, and they will leave the show, effective immediately. Are you watching the video without liking it again? I caught you red-handed. Guys, you regret bullying Joe? Oh, come on, man! Are you, are, you you man Natalia, are you a bully, Natalia? If you feel like you're being treated Tell us something. I love my husband with all of my heart. We stick together with my heart. There are many sides to the story, and I am not about to get an entire industry in trouble that has been going on for years and years, entertaining the masses. So, thank you absolutely everyone for your support. Thank you to all of our fans. He's a lucky man. He's a lucky man. And after Natalia was fired from the show, she became the public enemy number one. And as a result, she had to change her stage name to Teddy Sinclair and started releasing music through the band name Cruel Youth with her husband as a producer. To be honest, Cruel Youth is such an ironic name, considering that cruelty is how this entire thing initially started. And you might be wondering, but has Natalia ever acknowledged the entire situation? Yes, she actually made a statement at some point. Check it out. For a brief moment in 2015, I felt like it was the death of me. I was subject to a global witch hunt that I couldn't defend myself against due to a wide-reaching legal gagging order. It was truly a regrettable situation for everyone involved. However, even 10 years after the incident, she's still feeling the consequences of her actions. Even though nowadays she's not active on social media, she still gets drugged in her comment section to this very day, as well as Mr. Willie Moon. And the next person on the list is the one and only Ashley Simpson. Speaking of, two weeks ago I saw her live and it was so freaking iconic. The year 2004, Ashley Simpson, the little sister of pop sensation Jessica Simpson, was at the top of the game. At the time, she had just released her debut album, Autobiography, as well as her own reality show on MTV. Hey, I'm Ashley Simpson and I'm 19 years old. Speaking of the show, this moment lives in my head rent free. Yeah, and I just did it because I was doing all my laundry. Oh. Please tell me it's not what I think it is. It wasn't like that. He brought a sack over to do his laundry over here because he has to put a quarter in or whatever every time he does it at his. Wait, you're also seeing this? I'm dead. What the heck you think that actually was? <laughs> and by the way, fun fact, the apartment building next to me is that same building where the show was filmed. Yep, in 2004, Ashley was my neighbor, technically. <laughs> Even though I was not in the country yet. <laughs> but anyways, people immediately fell in love with Ashley's Edge vibe, which seemed totally different from her older sister. I can't believe all this. It seems like just a few months ago, I signed my record deal and started writing songs about Josh and Ryan and my sister. And now my record's out and it's already gone platinum. Baby, just ask me. I hear you talking. How 
However, the positive perception of the up and coming starlet has changed completely. After one of the most disastrous performances ever in SNL history. But did Ashley truly deserve to be blacklisted from the show business? Let's investigate. Once Ashley started gaining popularity, she would go on to every single talk show to promote the album. And obviously SNL was one of them. It should have been a major highlight of her career. But little did she you know, it would actually destroy it. Now let's time travel to that fateful night. 12.15 AM Basically, Simpson was set to perform a total of two songs. At first, she performs Pieces of Me without any problems, and everything went seemingly fine. Twelve forty-five a.m. Ashley and her band went back on stage to perform this second song. Once again, Ashley Simpson. But instead of the second song, the vocals for Pieces started playing once again, revealing that she had actually lip-synced her previous performance. On a Monday. In response, Ashley kind of panicked, to say the very least, and broke out into the infamous hoedown. <laughs> She then walked off the stage, as her band continued playing for several seconds, before the show cut to commercial. To say that everyone was taken aback backstage would be an understatement of the century. And I mean, it's pretty understandable. It's a live show and there is no possible way to cut the things out or change the scenario. So they had to come up with some sort of explanation ASAP. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song and I know what to do so I thought I'd do a hoedown. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ashley Simpson! Oh, everybody here! It stunned everyone, including the man in charge, Lorne Michaels. Has any performer ever walked off the set like that? Um, no. The reason there haven't been more mess ups like this is because of Lorne's rule no ad libs. Everything is going smoothly until Ashley Simpson rehearses. When she finishes, she rushes out and darts past us in tears, upset about her voice. Everything is going well until Ashley Simpson starts her second song. She walked off the set. Everyone on the show was stunned, including Lorne Michaels who told us he didn't know she was planning to lip-sync. The incident received significant media attention, and Ashley met with severe backlash. Two days later, her father, Joe Simpson, blamed the incident on his daughter's acid reflux disease, which apparently swollen her vocal cords. He claimed it was his decision to go ahead with pre-recorded tracks. You gotta do what you gotta do, he said. Entertainment Tonight caught up with Ashley two nights later at the Radio Music Awards, where she spilled details on the incident. I think my drummer got like really excited and maybe a little bit nervous, and he pressed the wrong button. I was like, okay, I think I've done the hoedown long enough, maybe I should walk off. If you ever go out to one of my shows or anything like that, I never ever lip sync. I'm always singing my heart out. I have severe acid reflux, and it was just acting up that day. Now, let me tell you something, people were not happy that she technically kind of blamed her band for it. And just like that, the intense media scrutiny has officially begun. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, no, we're not taking the blame for you again. No, oh my god, I'm totally not blaming you guys, it's not your fault. Three months after, in January of 2005, Ashley has gotten a chance to redeem herself. She was invited to perform during the halftime show at the Orange Bowl, and as you can guess, it was also a live television broadcast. Simpson performed her song Lala in front of 72,000 people. She sang live this time, but unfortunately, once again, it didn't go well. Kelly, 
Kelly Clarkson, Trace Adkins, Ashley Simpson, part of our halftime show at the fa <sighs> You've heard it yourself. The poor girl was bored off stage, but when questioned about the incident, she seemed pretty positive about the whole thing. There was some booing that went on after the halftime show was finished. If they didn't like the performance, and that's what it was about, then sorry to them. I was facing the Oklahoma Sooners, and I was rooting for USC, and they played a clip of it. So maybe it was that those people didn't like me. You never know, but I can't make everybody happy. Trying to sing in a stadium where you can't hear yourself is kind of hard. My sister Jessica was like, I don't know how you just did that. I performed in stadiums, and if I didn't have my ears, I would have freaked. You know, I had finished my album and it was out and Pieces of Me was number one and, and all of a sudden, you know, it happened and it was like boom and the world like hated me for this SNL moment I had. For me, it was the most humbling experience of my life because the whole world thinks everything that you just put your heart and soul into writing is a joke and that sucked. For me, I went back in, I made a second record, it was number one, and I made a third record, and I toured all these amphitheaters, and I don't even think the world knows that I got to that place. Who do you think was responsible for the SNL technical malfunction? Oh, Have me, you... me completely. Um, what happened there was I had a vocal problem, I had two nodes beating against each other, and I woke up and I had no voice, and, and then I should have said, no, I will not go on, I will not do this, and... Yeah. Would you do the show again if they asked? I, I did do it again, which nobody talks about. Isn't that like, wild? Oh, that, that Isn't happened? That wild? Oh, you went back on? <laughs> how heavily that affected you, and how... You know, it did, because I was such a young girl, and that yeah. was like, you know, heavy, but um, for me, it made me stronger, and you know, you know, it happens. Now, if you want to know my perspective, the media was too harsh on Ashley. Let's be honest, the lip syncing is, was, and always will be a common thing in the music industry. Some people just get away with it, and some don't. Like Ashley, for example, or the band Milli Vanilli. But that's a whole different topic. I feel like at the time, Ashley could not properly defend herself or recover from the situation, since she was a new common artist and didn't have enough time to gain credibility in the industry. And it was so goddamn easy to bully a new artist who didn't have a stable fan base to fight back, if that makes sense. Yes, maybe she effed up, but it was a goddamn lip sync. It's not like she killed a person or something. I don't know, sometimes I'm wondering how Ashley's career would have turned out if that incident never happened. Now, the next one on the list is Mark Selling. This story is way darker than previous ones, so trigger warning. Mark Selling was an American actor and musician who is best known for appearing on hit series Glee. I love the days when I don't wear underwear. Full commando. It seemed like he was on top of the world, but at the age of 35, he committed suicide after pleading guilty to a total of two child pornography charges. As I've mentioned, his first big break was the show Glee, when he was cast as a school heartthrob, Noah Packerman. This one hurts the most, cause I was such a huge Glee fan back in the day. In fact, it was the first ever show that I watched till the end. Till the last freaking episode, it was my show. I still remember the day when Corey died in July of 2013. You know, that boy who played Finn Hudson in the show. My Glee fans will understand, but anyways. Sometimes I feel like the show is freaking cursed, and I'm not even kidding. But maybe one day I'll talk about it in a separate video, not today. But Anyways, the show ran until 2015, and that same year the trouble started for Doctor. In December of that year, he was arrested for possession of child pornography and posted $20,000 in bail. Eventually, the LAPD obtained a search warrant for his home. And by 2016, he was revealed that between his hard drive, his laptop, and a USB flash drive, Doctor had over 25,000 images of CP, some with children as young as 3 years old. According to the plea agreement, the defendant showed his child to an adult woman in the context of their sexual relationship. This was ultimately reported to law enforcement. At the time of the incident, he was starring in a miniseries, Gods and Secrets. And needless to say, he was immediately fired from the show. By 2017, Selling struck a plea deal and pleaded guilty to possession of things I told you about. He was expected to be sentenced to four to seven years in prison. He was also required to attend a treatment program and register as a sex offender. And obviously, he was completely blacklisted from the industry. Industry. But in January 2018, some shocking news broke. Mark Selling's body was found hanging from a tree in the neighborhood that he lived in after a family member reported him missing. He was 35 years old. 
We begin with breaking news. An actor from the hit show Glee has been found dead. You can see this is where Salling's body was discovered near a riverbed in Sunland. Happened right around 8.50 this morning. TMZ is reporting that Salling may have taken his own life. Interesting is, so here's a photo that you're looking at right now. The, the caution tape on the right is presumably yes. where his body was found. Yeah. Pay attention to those rocks on the left though, because we found a photo in 2015 that Mark took where he appears to be on those rocks. Mm -hmm. Salling's attorney released a statement from his family which reads in part, Mark was a gentle and loving person, a person of great creativity who was doing his best to atone for some serious mistakes and errors of judgment. He is survived by his mother, father, and his brother. You say I should do it differently. I don't necessarily agree. The next problematic creature on the list, Kelly Osborne. It would have been a crime against pop culture not to include this girl into this list. Let's be honest, when we think of outrageous rock stars, Ozzy Osborne definitely comes to mind. Meet the perfect American family. There's the mom. I can't sit here and say, like, you know, I'm really the next Mother Teresa. And of course, the dad. Rock and roll! Kelly Osborne is one of their children. I don't really care what people think of my hair. If they like it or not, like it's not their hair, so I don't really care. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> And she found herself at the center of controversy when she apparently misspoke during a live episode of The View. There are a lot of Latinos here in this country that do agree that the immigration problem is a problem and it does need to be addressed and it does need to be fixed. Interesting. But making those racist comments do not help. If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Oh. Oh my God! What, what did you do? And the other hosts of the show were understandably taken and a bug by her opinion. And after Kelly noticed the reaction, she tried to fix her mistake. And that instant regret on her face says it all. Oh, that's no. In the sense that, no. you know what I mean? Like, what I'm saying there's that- more, There's more jobs to be- In LA, they always- But, but, but they don't, are not only the no, only people- No, I didn't mean it like that. that, come on. No, I would never no, mean it like that. that. To be honest, I don't feel like she misspoke anything. It sounds like her goddamn honest opinion. And as for that jaw-dropping remark of Kelly Osborne, she apologized on Facebook, saying what she said was a poor choice of words. However, many called her out for being racist, and I mean rightfully so. And just like that, the public downfall of Kelly Osborne has officially begun. If I saw that clip just with the 10 seconds, I'd hate me too. But I got cut off, I didn't get to finish what I was going to say, which turned the first half of it into a joke, but even if I told you what I was going to say, people wouldn't believe me anyway, it is what it is. I'm okay with people calling me whatever they want to call me. However, I'm not okay that I hurt people's feelings, and it was my poor choice of words, and it doesn't reflect my opinion at all and but after many years in 2024 she addressed this incident once again in rolling stone magazine this whole country is built on immigrants and if you stop people from coming into this country who do the jobs that make this country exist and thrive and flourish who's going to do all the jobs that you don't want to do yourself latin american culture is the backbone of america i believe that latin americans are the hardest working people you will ever meet it hurt a lot of people. I realized that I'm not great on live TV and that words are so powerful and to be labeled as something you're not is really difficult. But it happened. There's nothing I can do. I hate it so much because I look at it and I'm like, you think you know everything and you know nothing. Nobody wants to hear your opinion on this. What? And all that brings us to yet another unfortunate incident on live television. Janet Jackson's 2004 Super Bowl performance with none other than Justin Timberlake. Now, I've talked about this incident on my channel before, but I want to briefly remind all of you how the media did Janet Jackson dirty. To sum it up briefly, Janet and her stylist came up with a costume stunt. In the end of the performance, Tim Blake was supposed to pull away the bustier to reveal Janet's red lace bra, but instead the garment malfunctioned and he exposed her breast instead. <laughs> Your and as you can guess, he was broadcaster to the whole world, with only a nipple shield to cover her modesty. In fact, it triggered a whole wave of outrage across conservative America. And following the incident, CBS forced her to issue public apology. My decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV, CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this whatsoever. And unfortunately, the whole thing went wrong in the end. 
I am really sorry if I offended anyone. That was truly not my intention. And while Janet was put on blast by the media, JT had pretty much nothing to say about it. Now I was under the impression that what was going to be revealed in the costume reveal was a bustier, forgive me, got in, didn't really have time to rehearse it, got to the field, went on stage. When what happened happened, I mean, I was completely shocked and, and appalled. And all, all I could say was, oh my God, oh my God. You know, I, I immediately, I, I looked at her. I, I, they brought a towel up onto the stage. I immediately covered her up. I mean, I was completely embarrassed. Now, as I've said, Nipplegate caused the media frenzy. And over the course of one week, Janice's music was blacklisted from every radio station, which resulted her Demiro Joe album to underperform. If they're gonna worry about, you know, children and what children should and shouldn't see, I think they should address all issues on TV. I think there's a lot of violence on television as well. And there's a lot of hypocrisy about beating up on Janet Jackson and not a lot of other things that children um, um, have accessed. But I'm here now. And last, but certainly not least, Megan Fox. The incident that I'm gonna talk about right now didn't fully destroy her career, like completely. It's not like all the other cases that we've talked about today. But still, the story begins way back in 2009. At the time, the second Transformers film had been released. It was a huge success. And Michael Bay announced that he started working on a third film. In September, Megan gave an interview to Wonderland magazine, in which she was asked what it was like to work with Michael Bay. And her comments were very interesting, to say the least. He's like Napoleon, and he wants to create this insane, infamous madman reputation. He wants to be like Hitler on his sets, and he is. So he's a nightmare to work for, but when you get him away from set and he's not in director mode, I kind of really enjoy his personality. Her comments instantly went viral, and the use of Hitler's name was seen as a step too far. As a result, Megan would not end up being cast in a third movie, and the female character was instead played by the model Rosie Whiteley, with Megan's character being written out. Reportedly, Steven Spielberg didn't like her Hitler comments, and told Michael Bay to fire her. And you know, the Hitler thing. Steven said, fire her right now. By the way, I remember back in the day, it was huge news. The Transformers fans were freaking out. Megan Fox was fired. The film was not gonna be the same without her. What a time to be alive, you guys. <laughs> but eventually, Megan Fox and Michael Bay would reconcile in one of his movies, Ninja Turtles. Okay my legends, I feel like this is it for today's video. I really hope that you remember that in the end of every video we meet in the comment section down below to discuss the topic. And today is no exception. Which case from the ones that we talked about today was the craziest to you? Just so you know, I read all the comments, so definitely let's talk about it. Don't forget to like this video, cause you guys are the only thing that keep the show going and on this iconic note I will have to go. And I will see you in my next video this week and remember, your ex is effing toxic. The best way to make him bitter is to become successful. By Oh, by the way, I forgot, check out my vlogging channel. Okay, now bye. <laughs>